Yesterday's decision by Albanian President Ilir Meta was not well received by the Greek media, considering it a bomb that threatens the good relations reached so far between the two states. In January 2018, 134 road accidents were recorded compared to 119 accidents in the same period last year, representing an increase of 12.6%. The municipality of Tirana is in talks with representatives of the Mother Teresa Airport to enable an upgrade to the fleet of buses on this public transport line. Good evening, it's 6 o'clock on Wednesday. The of February 2018. Welcome to the English edition of Aura News. My name is Alexandra and I'm here to bring you the day's top stories from across the country translated into English. Greek media have reported yesterday's decision by President Ilir Meta to reject the Foreign Minister's request for full authority as a move to block negotiations for a maritime agreement between Athens and Tirana. With many media sources covering yesterday's development as a bombshell dropped on the negotiations, the most restrained title, written by Sky TV, announced discussions on exclusive economic zones with Albania frozen. The article went on to say at a press conference, Albanian President Ilir Meta stressed that he did not give his consent to continue negotiations with our country on delimiting the maritime borders that has to do with the exclusive economic zones. The highly watched television station, among the most popular in Greece, also points out that prior to being elected as president, Ilir Meta was the chair of the Socialist Movement for Integration, a political party which today finds themselves in opposition. The online news portal newsbomb.gr underlines that new developments coming from Tirana are adding to Turkey's provocative attitudes in the Aegean Sea and the Eastern Mediterranean, creating a potentially explosive arena. Quoting a statement from their article, the, Greek, the president of the neighbouring Albania, Ilir Meta, is throwing gasoline on the fire that is the Greek-Albanian relations, blocking Athens-Tirana negotiations on maritime borders. Similar sentiments are depicted by the LIFO.gr portal's article, which reads, the diplomatic climate between Greece and Albania seems to have, blown up by, seems to have been blown up by the Albanian president. The main Greek opposition newspaper, Elefteros Tipos, emphasises that the President of Albania has set fire to the Greek-Albanian relations and consider President Meta's rejection as a bomb with the effect of blocking negotiations. The right-wing newspaper, Demokratia, comments that President Meta's rejection is a torpedo launched targeting exclusive economic zones. The same newspaper, referring to well-informed sources, announces that Prime Minister Tsipras plans to visit the area where the Greek minority lives in Albania. Despite these titles, there are some less hot-headed analyses available of the situation, or a news communicated with some media sources in Greece who hold a more rational view of the rejection expressed by President Meta, considering it a natural decision. The analysts said that an official stance by Athens on the issue would not be of any use given this is an internal procedure of the Albanian state. Road accidents remain a significant cause to loss of life across the country. The Institute of Statistics reported that in January 2018, compared to the same period the previous year, accidents have increased by 12.6%, from 119 accidents to 134. On a more positive note, serious accidents resulting in death for the beginning of this year have reduced, with 13 victims compared to 22 one year ago. The data from the Institute depicts that 74.6% of accidents which have occurred in January this year are the result of driver behaviour, with the main demographic responsible being 45 to 60 years old. From both studies conducted by Instat and the World Bank, in addition to driver behaviour, road infrastructure is depicted as a significant risk factor in the prevalence of accidents. As such, the World Bank has granted the Albanian state a loan of 65.9 million euros for the intended purpose of road maintenance and improved road safety. The program will be extended until 2021. A meeting of the delegation of the European Council on Foreign Relations was held today, headed by the former Prime Minister and current Minister for Foreign Affairs of Sweden, Carl Bildt. During the meeting, President Ilir Meta expressed his opinion that it is both unacceptable and impossible to discuss destructive ideas for division or exchange of territories, considering them as desperate attempts to overlap populist agendas over vital integration and stability agendas. 
According to Meta, solving problems and real concerns of citizens should be the agenda placed on the tables of political leaders, with the focus on establishing the rule of law and democracy in each and every country. The head of state stressed the importance of the enlargement of the EU, especially with the six countries of the Western Balkans. Regarding this, he noted his desire that Albania will open EU membership negotiations as soon as possible. He also outlined the importance of Kosovo obtaining visa liberalisation as soon as the demarcation agreement with Montenegro is concluded. The chair of the Democratic Party, Lul Zimbasha, headed to Kamza today to speak with the families who have been excluded from the Economic Aid Assistance Program. According to the Democrats, the number of families affected have reached 20,000. In the conversation with the opposition leader, family members have complained of economic inability. They did not give us any explanation as to why we were removed from the scheme. We are now left without any money. We have nothing and the refrigerator is empty, lamented one citizen. According to the opposition, about 780 families have been removed from the economic aid scheme in the district of Kamza alone. The government's position remains that only families who were rotting the system have been removed from the scheme of economic aid. It is this stance that has led the Democratic Party to call a motion for debate with the Prime Minister in tomorrow's parliamentary session. The Economic Commission has refused to discuss the removal of a concession for the Porto Romano case as the project was presented with errors. The head of the Economic Commis Committee, Erion Brace, called for this draft to be reviewed again before it is presented for approval by the Assembly. He also requested the presence of the Minister of in Infrastructure, Damian Jignori, and the Deputy Minister of Agriculture. Appear before the Assembly after fixing the mistakes you have made, said Erion Brace. Meanwhile, the opposition has raised concern over the construction of the embankment required for the Port of Douras project, declaring that it poses the severe risk of consequential flooding of the city. Construction of the embankment at the port puts the city at significant risk of flood, said the DPMP Fatbarda Kadiu. Although the expansion of the port in Porto Romano has already begun, the change in this contract has arisen as during works technical problems have been identified. The municipality of Tirana is expected to launch another green bus line, this time from Tirana to Rinas. In addition to the Combinat Kino Studio line, the municipality has started talks with airport representatives to engage green buses on the airport route, serving as another step taken to protect the environment. We have started a discussion with Tirana Airport to have electric buses replace the current fleet operating from the city centre to Rinas. This way, we ensure that we reduce environmental pollution. We are also talking to our Chinese colleagues because today China is the avant-garde in producing electric buses. I look forward to very soon, within this year, knowing that all who travel between Tirana and Rinas will do so without causing pollution, declared the mayor, Arion Veliai. Meanwhile, representatives of the Mother Teresa International Airport have donated two new vehicles for removing waste and cleaning the city to the municipality. They have given us a very precious gift with a significant monetary value in the form of two trucks equipped with modern technology that will help our cleaning company increase the quality of cleaning all the way into suburban neighbourhoods. Through the addition of these vehicles in our fleet, we can increase the surface coverage to the newer areas of Tirana, such as Frescu, Asiri, Kodradielit and other suburban areas with a population and consumption growth, added Veliai. Tirana Airport also joined the planting of 100 trees in Tirana, thus providing a further contribution to a cleaner city through the Orbital Forest Municipal Project. The uncontrolled exploitation of inert materials along the Osumi River has been going on for years, causing significant damage and erosion. Diverting the flow of the Osumi River along the villages of Vetarik, Starova and Velabisht has resulted in floods, erosion and year after year further damage to tens of hectares of land. Despite the consequences of flooding in the area in the early days of this month, the farmers state that their land has never been assessed or any damages verified. 
Farmers of these villages say they have conveyed their problems to Prime Minister Eddie Rama, but according to them, nobody has come down to the Osumi's edge to verify the situation until now. We have never been compensated, resonated the farmers. Residents of the villages along the Osumi River require the construction of an embankment as a solution to preventing the erosion that is taking away their land and homes. And that's the news across the country today. Thank you for watching our English edition this evening and be sure to join me again every Monday to Saturday at 6pm for your local news in Albania in English. On behalf of Aura News, thank you and good night.